Hey, good afternoon. How y'all doing? It is Well Red Beard. We are here for a book review. Let's talk about a book today. Uh, we're talking about Zoltergeist, the Poltergeist by Douglas Hackle. Um, this is my second Hackle read having done Terror Mannequin. Now, I love Terror Mannequin. I gotta be honest, I like this one a little bit less. Uh, this was five stars for me. I'm gonna give this one four stars. It's still a damn good book. Uh, and if this is the first time you've heard about Douglas Hackle, then you really uh, are missing out and just absolutely don't know what you're getting into. Uh, it's absolute uh, absurdity is what it is. And when I first read Terror Mannequin, I didn't know what to classify it as um, because it kind of walks the line between horror and bizarro, but it's different. And um, and someone actually classified it as like this absurdity-based horror um, as a positive thing, I know, you know, if you say someone's writing is absurd, that could come off as negative. That's not the case here, but it is absolutely absurd. Uh, knock you on your ass, laugh out loud, funny in places, uh, you know, plenty of gore, plenty of blood and, and just odd, odd things, odd situations, uh, but lots of funny shit. Uh, so I'm holding the wrong book, but anyway, uh, before I go into the book, um, and I'm not going to say a ton about it. Maybe I will. I don't know. But uh, the way my relationship with Mr. Hackle started, uh, you know, he sent me this book. He sent me Terror Mannequin for review. Uh, back before I really um, was getting a lot of books for review. But, you know, I asked him why. He sent it, and he sent it with a, a little pencil top eraser. And, you know, he, he signed the boy. I don't know. I don't know if I noticed this or if I asked him. But I asked him, you know, why he didn't sign the book or, or something about it. And I don't know if you can see it. There's a dot right there. That's his signature. And, and he said, I don't really like signing my books, you know, in, in case somebody doesn't want the signature in there. Um, so I sign it in pencil. And I do it really, really small. And I send an eraser in case you don't want it in there. And... To me, that was absolutely absurd. And so that's how it started. But it, you know, was probably one of the most perfect setups uh, for me as far as, you know, getting into uh, the man's writing. Now, um, I don't know much about him. I, I'm assuming he is a smart dude. Have you ever, uh, if you follow him on Facebook, he, he plays the shit out of some finger style guitar. I mean, I play guitar. No, I don't. I mess around with guitar. This man plays guitar. It's nuts. And uh, and for someone to play at that level, there, I guess there's an assumption made that he's uh, a pretty damn smart dude. Uh, also, a guy that writes this type of stuff, this wild, out there, crazy stuff, I cannot lie and say that I haven't thought about, well, what if he just wrote a normal horror story? I mean, a guy that can write like this, what if he just wrote a haunted house story and kept all the absurdity over here. Um, I would imagine it would be pretty awesome, but I would also imagine that, you know, he can't do anything normal like that. Maybe. I don't know, Doug, I'm probably speaking out of turn, but I really enjoyed this book. I really, really liked it. I just liked it a little bit less than Terra Mannequin. So, uh, in this one, it's, it's absolutely nuts. Um, you, you, you read the title Zolter, or you see the title Zolter guys, the poltergeist. We, uh, follow, a. uh, a man in this, a, a young boy actually starts as a young boy, and Zoltergeist the Poltergeist is a TV character, um, and this guy is a huge fan of him and writes fan letters and shit, and and you know finally he gets a letter you know back from Zoltergeist after years and years and years of doing this, and 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 the, you know the basic gist of that letter was uh, fuck off kid kind of you know, but uh, so um uh man where do I go um. Everything in this book can be sentient. Like, um, like our our main character is like a chauffeur slash bodyguard for um, an actor, but this actor is a broth, a soup, you know, like a broth, uh, anything. And I mean, anything can be sentient. Uh, there is um, parts later on the book where the War of eighteen twelve is is a sentient being that shows up to a imaginary birthday party, and then. Uh, um, the last time that Abraham Lincoln masturbated in an outhouse, I think it's masturbated. It's actually something to the effect of, uh, the last time Abraham Lincoln cranked one off or cranked one out in an outhouse. Now I initially thought that was farting, 
Um, but I, I think later on I interpreted that cranking one out means masturbation. So, yeah, uh, you, you see where we're going. And I haven't even really gotten into anything about the story. So, anyway, um, our character, our main character is a chauffeur slash bodyguard for a sentient soup that is a famous actor. Um, and, um, and this sentient soup is fucking drunk and crazy and, and it goes to a, uh, um, uh, sorry for the dog barking, uh, goes to a, ca a Catholic church there in Las Vegas and, uh, to confess his sins and, um, and he wants our main character to do the same thing, you know, and. And this guy wasn't prepared. He's not Catholic. He's never really given a confession. He goes in there and he makes some story up about how um, he had um, impure thoughts about the lead singer of the Bangles. I think it was the Bangles. Is that the... Yeah, anyway, um, back when he was a kid. And, and so because of that, he gets to spin the wheel or, or pull the the uh, slot machine lever of, um, of penance or, or whatever. And... Sorry, guys. All kinds of uh, interruptions today. Um, and he gets sent to this place, this uh, penance house, for six months. He has to go serve at this house. But anyway, the paragraph right there, he said, um, you know, he's talking about his boss and all the shitty things his boss had done. And all he'd done was thought about um, the lead singer of the Bangles. But he said, man, this isn't fair, yo. I mean, look at my friggin' boss. Due to Tin's eyes wide shut orgies. And eats the flesh of sacrificed hookers and stuff like that. And all he has to do is say a few Our Fathers and a couple Hail, Hail Marys. Yet, I'm supposed to lock myself up in a house in some podunk town in some flyover state for six months just because I rubbed one out to walk like an Egyptian 35 friggin' years ago. <laughs> so, he goes to Penance House. I mean, you know, no questions, right? I mean... This random church in Las Vegas has, you know, assigned me to do penance in this place. And he goes there and he's all alone and, uh, you know, this and that. And kind of gets into the research of some other, like, there's this, like, ghostish thing in one room. And there's this other thing. And again, everything's sentient. Everything's weird. There's a leprechaun with a gigantic... The leprechaun's small, but a part of him is gigantic. You can probably guess what part of him that would be. Um, uh, <laughs> and uh, and it just gets deeper and deeper and deeper. And and he's there alone as far as like the penance doers, the, the prisoners or whatever you want to say. Until, guess what? Zoltergeist the Poltergeist shows up. And... They get into all kinds of shit and hijinks and weird shit. And I've marked so many places in this book, little funny things uh, that I would like to tell you about. But I've already talked about the book for eight minutes. Uh, another thing that's really funny is like multiple chapters end with the same little sequence of words. If I can find that, I may not be able to find it. Um, I mean, it, it would tell you something and it would say it was janked up as heck. Fuck. I mean, that's what it would say. It is janked up as heck. And then it would say fucking, you're like, it's like he's put a lot of effort into not cussing. It was janked up as heck. And then the next line was fuck. And um, I don't know. I mean, there's absolutely no way I could have reviewed this book without saying the F word. Mom, I apologize because um, there's a lot in here. Um, but yeah, it's it's just next level absurdity. Like, you know, the, the, the story itself is absurd. I mean, a guy gets sent to a penance house and, and then a poltergeist, an actual real life poltergeist, but it, who is also a TV star and plays a poltergeist in the show, but he's a poltergeist in real life. Um, they, you know, pair up at this penance house. I mean, that's absurd enough, right? But it just goes on and on and on. And, and if that sounds like if what I'm telling you about this book sounds like it's too much for you, like if it sounds weird and stupid and you would not be into it, um, I can't argue with you. I mean, you're probably right. I mean, that's just facts. But if you want to change things up, if you want to laugh a little bit, if you, I mean, if you, you know, I get whored out. I don't know about you, but I have to read different things. And this one kind of still gives me some blood and guts and gore, but it's funny too, you know, and, uh, um, and that's what I like about Hackle stuff. Um, I want to see if there's anything else that I just couldn't uh, not share with you. Uh, I mean, there's a part in here where uh, um, 
they're using the Necronomicon, but the Necronomicon is also being used with the Leprechaunicon, which is where the Leprechaun came from, and then the Dickonomicon, which is probably where the Leprechaun got his um, very large... So the Necronomicon, the Leprechaunicon, and the Dickonomicon go to Comicon. No, I'm kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, so the, in this place, it's we take place in Dapper Dog, Ohio. I, I forgot about that, but the town is called Dapper Dog, Ohio, and it's just one thing after another. Oh yeah, one other thing, you know, um, our main character while he's at Penance House, and even leading up to it, like you know, because as a kid he was a big favorite or a big fan of this. Uh, Zoltergeist, the Poltergeist show, right? And um, and so, like, when he watches an episode, like, we get the full story of the episode, and it usually is um, Zoltergeist finding a way to accidentally or on purpose uh, very, very horribly kill a child or his wife or, or the dog or, or, or whatever in just a very horrible manner. Uh, and in that, um, you know, there are stories within the story, uh, do not compare it to the Illustrated Man by Ray, Ray Bradbury. Don't do that. You do every time there's stories within. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, there's stories within a story. You know, I don't really have a comparison for that. Like, like what to what to you know compare that to? But I enjoy that. Like, I enjoy many stories within like a a larger story. I wish I could think of something to compare it to. Um, anyway, so this is Zoltergeist the Poltergeist. It is Douglas Hackle. I gave it four stars. Uh, it's different than anything else I read, and I'm, I mean, it's different than any, any horror, any bizarro, uh, it, it is something else, something different, uh, this is the other book I've read by him, I've got a collection of short stories of his that I'm going to be doing, uh, fairly soon, bringing it to Shorts on Shorts, actually, I opened it up and I was going to start, and the first story was like 40 pages long or something like that, and I, I shot away, uh, because I had a couple four or five page stories that I could read and get the same amount of content out of. I'm a horrible, horrible book reviewer. But uh, anyway, Zoltergeist the Poltergeist, Douglas Hackle, four stars. Uh, it's definitely worth checking out. It's definitely unlike anything else you read. Uh, this has been Well Read Beard. This has been my book review. I hope you're enjoying all your books, all of them as much as I am. If not, you reading the wrong damn books. Oh, yeah. It's an inside joke. You got you got to read the the terror mannequin one, but it also makes an appearance in. Oh yeah, sorry. Have a nice day.